Go Sal. Yeah, it's certainly a bit of a nasty lump, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. On this episode. The most likely thing is that we do have an eyelid cancer. Delicate surgery has Andrew anxious for Sally the cow's future. I think we're best to just um, remove the entire eyelid. It's always a worry that if Sally moves, the scissors could pierce the eyeball. It's here. It's here. Oh my God. Oh, yeah. Well done. Congrats. Finally. That's cool. Yay. And why is Dr. Romy so over the moon? Hey, you guys. Feels good. I just really love animals. Hey, mate. Good boy. And I love the joy they bring to our lives. Not like anything I've ever seen, honestly. I've been a bit a long time. But first on this episode... I am really, really worried that this could be something nasty. We could have a tumour, which is what I would be certainly concerned about. The worst case scenario is that the cancer could spread to other areas of the body and then Kuda could actually die. Come my love. Good boy. In the Australian rural town of Ulladulla, Linda has brought her Siberian husky Kuta to see Andrew as she's worried about a nasty growth on the 14-year-old's neck. It came up fairly fast. There was a little tiny lump which I thought was a tick originally. Um, it sort of hasn't done much, but lately it's come up into like a golf ball size. It's all right, darling. Good boy. Who's is extremely important to our family. I've got five grandkids and he's fantastic with the kids. He's just a great dog all around. G'day Linda. How are you going? Hello Cooter. How are you? Hello. He's beautiful, aren't you? Come on in. Yeah. Come on. No, it's not time to go home, love. I've been working on Cooter probably for almost 14 of his 14 and a half years, so he's one of the regular patients. So I'm watching him grow up from a little puppy to the older gentleman that he is now. And he's a very, very well loved member of the family. So I just want to make sure that we're doing the right thing by him and his lovely owners. And what's Cooter in for today? He's got a lump that's come up behind his right ear. Okay. It's, I, it was a tiny little lump that I noticed not so long ago and I checked for a tick. But now it's quite large. Yep. And no he worries. also has a lump on his tail. Okay, that I long. thought was grease, but it's actually dried blood. Oh, in sure. his fur. Okay. I've tried to check it, but he won't allow me no worries. to yep. do it. So what I think we'll do is start at the front and then we'll work our way back and yes. see what we come up with. Yep. Hey, you the boy. It feels in the skin itself, so it doesn't feel like it's a mass that's coming from deeper within okay. the skin at all. Mm -hmm. um, and it does feel quite crusty. It's a weird feeling thing, actually. Not like anything I've ever seen, honestly, and I've been a bit a long time, but it's really scabby and firm and has some moisture, a little bit of discharge in this area here. Fast-growing lump could be lots of things. We could have an infection, like an abscess, that's just filling up with pus and growing like that. We could have a cyst, which would be filling up with fluid. We could have a tumour, which is what I would be certainly concerned about, especially given Cuda's age. The worst sort of lump would be a bad malignant type of cancer. Come to the back lump now as well, mm -hmm. the one on the tail. Is it this, this little thing here? That's it, yes. Sure. You see it's been weeping a fair mm, bit, I think, yes, actually. That's what all that black stuff is there. It doesn't look too sinister at this stage, but I think we'll need to do some tests to yeah, yeah. investigate that a bit yeah. further. A malignant cancer can grow really quickly. And the worst case scenario is that the cancer could spread to other areas of the body and then Cuda could actually die. It's all right, Coop. It is okay. Thank you, buddy. Yeah. Andrew's next step is to do blood tests on Cooter to enable him to get a closer look at the possibly cancerous lumps. It's okay. It's okay. Good boy, Cooter. He's very well behaved for that. The blood will check for the kidneys, liver, diabetes, the pancreas. So it does a pretty broad spectrum of things to make sure that Cooter's under good enough health to be safe to go under sedation. They're pretty good, I must say. There's nothing really of concern at all on the blood test. There you go, mate. Okay. It's all right, Cooter. Good boy. Cooter gets the green light to be sedated. And in a few minutes, he'll start to get a little bit drowsy, or probably feeling pretty good. 
Andrew can now get a closer look at the potentially cancerous lumps on his long-time patient. We don't know what we're dealing with, so we're just going to clip a bit of the hair away. Cuda's really important to Linda and they've been through a lot together. We've done multiple operations on Cuda over the years. He's had both his cruciate ligaments repaired. He does have arthritis, he does have cataracts. I'm really worried for Cuda because he is an older fella now and the lump is really fast growing, especially the one behind the ear. That lump is oozing and then it's become infected. It is really bloody and it's quite bruised as well. So I am really, really worried that this could be something nasty. So what I'm going to do now is actually clip the tail as well and see what that lump looks like underneath. Andrew will check both worrying growths on Kuta before deciding if the 14-year-old needs to have them surgically removed. It actually looks a little bit different to the lump at the front, so it could be absolutely anything as well. So what we've got is two different lumps on two different parts of the body. They look totally different, so I think what we'll do is take them both off, send them both to the laboratory for a biopsy, and then we'll get to the bottom of both of them. The biggest issue is that it's in a really awkward spot. So the lump's actually right at the base of the ear, which does have a lot of blood vessels. It's a really awkward area to try and get the skin back together. We do also have that inflamed skin, so it's also gonna be a bit of a concern as to how it actually heals. As well as the potentially dangerous lumps, Andrew will remove as much tissue around them as he can, in the hope of cutting out all the suspected cancer. We're going to take quite a wide margin around it, just so we, if it is nasty, we can try and get rid of all of the cells around it. Nearby, Kuta's owner Linda is worried about the future of her much-loved husky. I am very concerned that it could be something more sinister going on. I put his best mate, a little foxy, down about 10 months ago. Those two grew up together, so it is a concern that he might have to join his little foxy mate, but he's in good hands with Andrew. And we'll pop that in a little pot for pathology. I'm happy with the actual incision. We took enough margin around it, I hope, which the pathologist will either confirm or say we haven't. After stitching up the head wound, Andrew starts on removing the growth on Cooter's tail. You have to be very careful in this area because there are obviously a lot of nerves to the tail and we do have those blackheads in that region as well that are a little bit of a concern. So we're just trying to avoid going through all of those. And there we go, there's the sample. I'm really happy with how it went. We took a good margin around both the lumps so that it won't grow back. The wounds came together nicely. So I hope when we get the results back, it will be a benign lump and not something nasty. There's our pumpkin. There we go. I've done what I can, but unfortunately, Cooter's not out of the woods at this stage. It's just a waiting game. Hello. Hey, Romy. Yes? While Andrew waits for Cooter to recover, he has a very special surprise for Dr. Romy. Were you expecting something? Uh, yes. An envelope? Yes. Born in Uruguay, Romy has lived and worked in Australia for several years. It's here. It's here? Oh my God. So I've been waiting for a package to arrive and it's very important to me. And I think I know what this is about. Oh my God, it's my passport. Oh, well, yeah. well done, congrats. Finally. That's cool, yay. Oh my God. I came here on a working holiday visa and I just fell in love with the country. My home is here now. I felt Australian already, I just wanted it to be official. But I'm so excited, this is so great. I've been waiting this for so long. I finally feel like I'm completely a part of this country and I get to be Uruguayan and Australian at the same time, which is great. Oh, congrats, that's top. Oh, thank you. Uh, great thank job. Thank you. Great job. We might be located in a small coastal town, but I'm really proud we do have a world-class team here. 
We have vets from Uruguay, from Mauritius, from Italy. We have a nurse from Switzerland. So it doesn't matter what you bring into the hospital, whether it's an Italian Greyhound, a French Bulldog, or a Swiss Shepherd, we've got you covered. So to our newest Aussie, I've got a surprise. Oh my God, thank you. Hey, guess what everyone? Wow. Our newest Australian. Oh, I love it. Don't get away with it that easy. Congratulations. I feel like I should do it like that. Now it's time for Lamingtons. Lamingtons! Yay! But Romy hasn't just fallen for Australia, she's fallen for an Australian. I also fell in love with someone. I'm getting married in a month. This is going to be a whole clinic's affair because everyone's included at the wedding, so everyone's invited. All of my bridesmaids are actually my friends from work. So it's gonna be great. I'm so excited <laughs> for you. Congrats. Thank you, Ash. Thanks. Congratulations. Oh, thank you. It's been a big day for dual citizenship Romy, who can now look forward to the biggest day of all. Thank you, guys. Woo! It's a, it's it was so nice to have everyone with me today. Getting all those hugs and they are my family. I couldn't be here without them. They've made, they made this place home. I love it. It's just perfect. I love it. Hey, Kuda. Hello, mate. Hello. You're looking great. The day after removing Kuta's nasty looking lumps, Andrew checks in on his patient before sending him home. We'll just check your tail, mate. And that wound looks great as well. Okay, should we go and see your mum? Go on, buddy, let's go. Come on, Kuda. Hey. Kuda's wounds are looking really, really good. They're healing well. The tumours look really ugly. They were growing rapidly. They were really bloody and inflamed and infected. So I had really big concerns that there was something very nasty. It's all right, love. It's all right. Kuta's loving owner, Linda, has arrived anxious to learn the results of the pathology tests on the lumps. That looks great now, mm. the combination of the surgery and the medication. I'm hoping I'll get good results today. I am a little anxious, but I have faith in Andrew to give me some good news. Look, the results came back yes. and they're actually really good news. Oh, thank so God. That's great. Thank okay, goodness. Okay, so um, they came back as something called a sebaceous adenoma. Okay. Both the lumps actually were the same thing. Okay. Um, and they're a relatively common tumour in older dogs, yeah. but they're benign. Wonderful. Which means, yeah, it's great. So it means yeah. that they don't spread to other areas like that's... the liver or the lungs or anywhere else. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, really nice. Yeah, thank yeah, you. That's great. I know Linda's ecstatic with the news. She's got a smile that you can't wipe off her face. Good boy, cutie. I'm really relieved and this is a great result. Kuda can go back to enjoying his life as he was before. It's okay, cutie. Come on. He's happy to go home, I think. He is. I can't blame him. Yeah. <laughs> Here we go. A very good boy. Thank you, Andrew. I feel ecstatic that Kuda has had the best news. I was really not wanting to have to get bad news and contemplate having to put him to sleep. So he's in for the long haul, I think. Nice and healthy. See you, mate. Good boy. Thanks, Andrew. No worries. You're welcome. Hey, Abba. Take you home. Near Ulladulla, cattle are being rounded up for milking. Not far behind, Andrew's on his way to check if some of the herd are likely to have babies soon. A big part of their job is to make sure we try and get a, a cow in calf every year. So today we're just going to see if they're pregnant. Andrew has returned to Carl's farm, where just days ago, he helped Atlantis give birth to her 14th calf. Well done. Yeah, come on. That's it, that's it. 
Today, Andrew will test three of Carl's cows to see if they're expecting the same happy event. Hey, Carl, who's our first girl? Ah, uh, first girl's Red Rose. Oh, okay, cool. And she's... Uh, Reckon she's pregnant? Oh, I hope so. Hope so? No worries. <laughs> What we're doing is a rectal exam. We use lots of lubricant and then we will be able to feel the uterus and see if there's any calf in there. Well, girl. So, Carl, we can feel one side's bigger than the other, so I reckon she's pregnant. Oh, fantastic. Yes, good girl. The three cows we are preg testing today are Red Rose, Claire, and Splendor. Who have we got here, Carl? Uh, Devour Claire. Devour Claire? Where do you get the names from? <laughs> We're hoping all three cows pregnant. Of course, that'd be a pretty valuable calf they're carrying inside them. Artificially inseminated as well? Yes. You see? Yeah, cool. So what we're feeling for when we do the preg test is for the actual size of the uterus and the ovaries. With years of experience, we feel for changes and that's how we can tell if the cow is pregnant. She's about the same time as the last cow, about seven and a half, eight weeks. Okay, yeah, sure. If she is. Yep. These cows have been artificially inseminated, so we just need to see that it's been successful. I think she's in calf as well, actually. Oh, good job. Yeah. yeah. The AI man's done a good job. He has. Pregnancy tests are really important, especially on dairy farms. We've got to make sure they try and get into calf every year if they can, just to keep the farm going for future generations. Come on, sweetie. Thank you. <laughs> Bit of a protective bar. How old Splendor? She's about four. Oh, yeah. yeah, it's not feeling as good, unfortunately. She's not pregnant. Can't win them all. No, Can you? no. There you go, sweetie. That's two out of three is not too bad, Carl. Yeah, not too bad. Happy that Red Rose and Claire are expectant mums. Look at these little cuties. Carl proudly shows off some of the farm's recent arrivals. Yeah, they're all doing well, actually. How old are they? Uh, all these ones in this pen will be about a week and a half old, two okay. weeks old. Yep. Yeah. How many are there? There's 11 in here. Yeah. I always love coming to this property. Carl's been a great bloke ever since I've known him. He was born and bred on this property, and he's bred all these cows on the property, and he obviously loves them. Yeah. Hello, a frisky there's, one. There's one running around there. Do you artificially inseminate these ones? Most of them would be AI, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah fair AI enough. Cars, yeah. While it's been mainly good news today... There's one other cow I want you to have a look at. It's got a bit of a concern with her eye. OK. Carl is worried about Sally, one of his prized milking cows. Oh, I've noticed a little oh, bit yeah. of a growth on her eye. I'd just like you to have a bit of a look at it. Yeah, sure. Andrew is about to examine a concerning growth on three-year-old Sally's right eye. There you go. Hey, sweetie. Go, hey, Sal. Yeah, it's certainly a bit of a nasty lump, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. So when we have a growth like that, what we worry about, we could have actually had some trauma to the eye if we ran into a stick or, or a kick from another cow, or we could have a bit of an infection, or we also do worry about cancer, unfortunately. Any lump in an eye is always a concern. Sally's only a young girl. She's a great looking cow. She looks in good condition, but that eye is a big concern. We'll just tie her up so that that, yeah, like that's perfect actually. Just so I can have good access to that eye. Yep. And that'll just keep her head nice and straight and not be able to thrash around too much. Good girl. I'm just concerned about Sally. She's got another seven, eight, ten years of life. Hopefully Andrew might be able to allay my fears that there could be something more serious. This one does look pretty nasty. Oh, I love all the cows. I know who they all are, I know all their names. They were born here, red, mated and carved here. They've lived their whole life here and they we love them. We're just going to use a couple of drops of this local anaesthetic onto the eyeball. Filter it around that eyelid as well. So you can see there is actually quite a nasty lump that's growing there. It is a bit inflamed around it as well, so I think we're best to just um, remove the entire eyelid. The most likely thing is that we do have an eyelid cancer. They're relatively common in the third eyelid of a cow. If it's a cancer, it can cause further problems. Let's just get in there and have a better chance at looking at the eye. The third eyelid 
is a little piece of material that comes across the eye to protect it and it's growing on the tip of that. So what we have to do is to get rid of the whole eyelid just to make sure it doesn't grow back. Sally can live a relatively normal life without her third eyelid, but removing it in the field presents its own unique risks. It's one of the more interesting parts of the job that I do love is the variety. So obviously from doing a cruciate ligament repair in the sterile surgery or now removing an eyelid out amongst the flies on the cattle property, that variety is what really makes me love being a vet. What we're going to do, Carl, is grip onto that third eyelid with the forceps. Yep. If you don't mind just yep. holding her nice and still for me. Yep. The real risk is that she doesn't move ahead too much while we've got the scissors in our hands. We have to be a little bit careful, obviously, oh, with the scissors sure. and yep. the eyeballs. So we're just going to grab onto that. Yep. And then in one quick action, hopefully. Good girl. The operation's risky. We are obviously near the eyeball, so we just want to make sure that we don't cause any damage. I might go downwards, actually, from the top to the bottom. Okay. So what I've got to do right now is keep her head as still as possible. Good girl. Sally's getting a little bit feisty in there. It's always a worry that if Sally moves, the scissors could pierce the eyeballs. So if she moves her head around, we need really quick reflexes and move the scissors straight away. Nearly done. Good girl. There you go. There you go. All done. Once the blood clots and dries up, except for the flies, we shouldn't have any concerns. No, that sounds good. Andrew's removed that third eyelid. I think the cancerous growth has all been taken out. I think it's a great result. All positive. Oh, good girl, Sal. She'll be happy to go back with the, with the sisters. Oh, I think she would she, be. Yeah. I think overall it was a pretty good success today. Um, we managed to get rid of the eyelid. There's a bit of blood, but that's to be expected. And now with Sally, it should be plain sailing. Hey, sweetie. It's always a challenge working with big animals, but it's always a great thing to get out to the farm. It's been an extremely busy but rewarding few weeks for the dedicated doctors, nurses and staff at the Ulladulla Veterinary Hospital. See you, boy. <laughs> but amid all the tears... Good night, old friend. ...happiness... Which one of you will be coming home with me? ...and celebrations... Oh, well, well done, congrats. It's the amazing patients and their loving owners that keep this tight-knit and passionate team of animal health professionals striving to do the very best for every creature in their care. If you guys loved that video, great. Make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel below. That way.